Welcome to the Jason E. Jones Show, a patriotic sports show. And now, here's the show. It is time for the Jason E. Jones Show, wherever you are, whenever you are, whoever you are. Thanks so much for listening to the show. As you know, we've made a new friend with the show, John Marshall, Beaver High School, Just the Beavers, Pound for pound, the toughest animal around. <laughs> yeah. That's my Mr. Belding laugh from, and he is from Tennessee, by the way. He's from Chattanooga. Ha, ha, ha. So, yeah, my corny, my corny laugh there. Coach, what a great, great start to the season. You are now 2-0, and I believe. Yes, we are. That's correct. Now, last night, you went down the road. Uh, you played this team before Grantsville, correct? Yes, this is we played them. So I guess this would be the the fourth year in a row that we played them. Now you were uh, very blessed to come away with a thirty-one to three big time win on the road. Yes, it was a great win for us uh, going up there to their place. Uh, they've got a great environment up there. They've got a very proud tradition. It was a great crowd, lots of people, and uh, a big win for us. Coach, so we'll get right to it. Quarterback looked great last night. Uh, let's look here. We've got Wheatley, Bodie Wheatley. Yes. He actually he actually looked really good. Uh, we talked off air and you, you really felt like he, he really, he really stepped up. You could see a difference first year starter at quarterback. You could see a big difference from the first game to the second game. Yeah. Bodie had a great game for us. Um, you know, just, just looking at, at the numbers for him, you know, and we're a team that doesn't, doesn't throw the ball a ton, but, um, he had a great night for us. Uh, the Grantsville kind of, uh, they they stepped up and uh, kind of tried to take away our run game. And Bodie did a great job of, of throwing the ball and uh, really excited to see his growth so far this year. And kind of getting back to your philosophy, you run a, a wing tee, but you can do a few things out of that. Yeah, we, we run the wing. We, we, we go both under center. And in the gun, and in the gun, we've kind of did some things where we've we've spread teams out just a little bit, so maybe it makes it a little harder for them to to pack the box. But uh, you know, we we're kind of have a, a a mentality of we're going to take what the defense gives us, and hopefully our run game makes them have to you know pack the box. And when they do that, we're we're going to throw the ball, and and that's kind of what happened last night. Uh, we were able to have success both on the ground and through the air. Talking about the the first drive of the game, 
Uh, we're talking with John Marshall, Beaver High School, Beaver, Utah. The first drive of the game, you felt really, you really liked the way that the offensive line kind of stepped up and, and really, really kind of set the dominance of the rest of the game. Yeah, they did. Uh, we were we were outsized, which is kind of the norm for us. But uh, Grantsville's got some some really good sized kids, and um, I thought our offensive line did a good job of handling that. Um, you know, looking at our stats, uh, we rushed for. 278 yards off of 40 carries so that's almost you know that's close to to you know seven yards a carry it looks like and and so that that was pretty impressive if, if we can put up those kind of numbers we're feeling pretty good as far as the offensive line goes the unsung heroes i've done pa for high school and had some fun with the little league and the buffet busters if you will it, it's it's just so it's so important to have an offensive line that works together, cohesiveness, just working together, communicating, understanding, being able to make the right calls. And that comes back to the leader of the offensive line. Usually that's the center position. Yeah, we've got some really good offensive linemen this year, some kids that are doing a great job for us. I want to give them a shout out here. So we've got a we've we've, we've kind of got a little bit of a rotation. We got about six, seven guys that are playing there uh, so far, but uh, guys like Braden Evans and Braden Laws are, are two returning starters. There are two guards, and they're doing a great job for us. Our center is uh, Braxton Holgreen. All three of those guys are seniors. Uh, then we've got uh, also playing some guard for us. We've got uh, Jackson Lawshire and Titan Hunter. They're both sophomores, younger guys that are doing a great job. And then we got guys like Caleb Moffitt and Zayden Gillins and uh, uh, Jace Hafen, who those guys are rotating in there as well. Kind of some new guys filling in, but we've, we, we like what we're seeing from them so far. Now, when it comes to, again, uh, your center, how long has he been at the position? So this is his first year. Uh, so first year as a starter, he's played JV and, and sub-varsity for us up until now, and and so Braxton's doing a, a great job uh, fill, filling in there. Uh, we did lose some some really good offensive linemen from last year. So I guess coming in the season, one of our biggest, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, biggest uh, question marks, maybe if you will, it would, was that what was our offensive line going to be? And that's starting now to kind of take shape, and we're excited about that. And again, based on last night's game, we're, we're, we're feeling like we're making some progress. So it's going well. With a first-year starter like your center, can you give people an idea as far as calls on, on the line? Who are who, are are you giving your offensive line the ability to make the calls? How does that work for people that well, maybe well, we, we do? Uh, it, it's interesting because uh, in the wing T and, and Randy Hunter, our, who's now our AD and mm-hmm. and was our head coach for a year, he. When he came to Beaver High School, I think it was back around 2008, 2009, he, that's when we installed the wing tee. Uh, Steve Hutchings, the head coach, had Randy kind of bring the wing tee and mix it in with our triple auction. And they have uh, calls on the line where, based on the defensive alignment, they communicate with each other. And, yeah, that's a big part of, of what we do. Now, having said that, an interesting thing is we've kind of changed some things up this year where we're – running a little more of a high tempo type of pace. Uh, we have what we call a muddle huddle where we are, uh, if I can explain this, we actually do two breaks. We'll have a, a, a break where we have our wide receivers go out to their positions. And then we have a second break where uh, our f- offensive line hurry and aggresses the line of scrimmage gets lined up and we go. And so Having said that, it it makes it harder for us to use those calls mm. for offensive line because there's not as much time to recognize what what the defense is doing. But I guess what we're trying to do is this is making it hopefully more difficult for the defense to line up. What, what you see a lot of the wing T is people are going to come in and they're going to run specific you know techniques against certain formations, and we're we're trying to. We, we feel like what we're doing with this up-tempo uh, style is making it harder for that. But I guess having said that, it it's maybe made it 
a little more challenging for our offensive line to get a good read and do some of those calls. But it's something we're filling out and we're working through. So, Coach, let's talk first quarter. Uh, the first quarter ends. You are – it's a shutout at this point. Yeah, I think we, we jumped up on them 12-0. to uh, Our first drive of the game, we, we had a great run by Tavin Hollingshead uh, to the outside and had some great blocking for him. I think he scored on a 55-yard touchdown. And then our defense got another stop. And then on our second series – we were able to uh, punch in a, about a 20-yard touchdown pass from Bodie Wheatley to Cutler Matheson, and so we got off to a good start. So we're up, I think we were up 12 to nothing going in the second quarter. And we talked off air. If you keep it simple as far as football goes, you want to win. If you can win each quarter, in fact, win each possession, you you can win a ball game that way. Yeah, and, and and really, that's that's what it comes down to. And it, it sounds simple, not always as simple as it sounds, but but yeah, we got off to a good start, and and so we were feeling pretty good at that point. Coach, they they come back in the second quarter. Grantsville does comes back, and they uh, they they're able to put up the only points of the game uh, for them. What did you see, and what do you think you can improve on with with that drive? Well, they they, they did a good job that drive. Uh, we had a, actually several fourth downs where they had about a fourth and three, fourth and four, and they were able to to find some some little seams in our zone and, and complete a couple of the dump passes. That um, I'm hoping that as we move forward, we can work on that type of a situation and not let them convert. Now, other than that, we did a, a great job uh, of of getting them off the field, but we we struggled for. I, well, I don't know if I'd say we struggled, but credit Grantsville. They they made some good plays, but they got it down to around the just inside the twenty, and then we toughened up and got a big stop to hold them to a field goal. So. Uh, there, there are some areas that I think we can get better at, but uh, again, when when it came down to it, we we had a great stand there to keep them from scoring a touchdown. With with that being said, coach, on those on those kind of dump off those little throws there, you're needing your defensive line. They have to make sure that they're staying disciplined. Yeah, and and then our and our linebackers. Uh, you know, we we play a lot of we play a lot of zone coverage. Um, we don't do a lot of man, um, and you know, uh, there's probably just some some work we need to do with our. You know, where we got great linebackers, but uh, again, just finding the guy in their area and, and getting a hand on the ball and not letting them complete those little those little stops, those little dig routes that kind of is what they they had going for them there. Yeah, absolutely. So go into, let's talk a little bit about, we're going to compare the, uh, and before we get to this, let's talk about a halftime. It was 25-3, correct? Yes. So the so the Beavers take a commanding 25-3 lead going into a halftime. Uh, before we get to the numbers here, Coach, you you got to you got to feel good at that point. You're on the road. You've got a bigger team that you're playing against. But where I'm from, you always say that it's not about the the size of the dog. It's about the fight in the dog. Yeah, that's how we approach things uh, with with our size and usually being a little smaller than most teams we're playing. Uh, that's kind of our attitude, and we challenged them at halftime. Uh, we felt the week before against South Summit. I think we went up. In the halftime, twenty-seven to zero, and in the second half, they they kind of got the better of us, and so we challenged our kids not to let that happen, not have a letdown, and we feel like we we did better this week. Um, we came out, got another touchdown there in the third quarter. Our def- our defense continued to play well, and and so uh, yeah, it was a really really solid outing for our team. You got to you got to finish. You got to finish, right. and and that's what championship teams do. And and thirteen times state champion. I always mention that with with Beaver High School and the football team. There, thirteen times state champion. Yeah, we've had a, again great tradition. Um, 
again, like I said the other day, uh, goes back to the 1970s, 1980s. Uh, Coach Al Marshall and other coaches like uh, Coach Alan Radden, who's actually my high school coach back in the 90s. We were able to win a state championship back in those days. Uh, you know, just uh, a, a, a great tradition we got there in Beaver. Let's we'll continue throughout the game. You end up shutting them out in the second half. And anytime a football team can shut out another football team in the second half, you have such a great chance of, of becoming victorious after that contest. Yeah, and, and our defense again was very solid. Now, Grantsville, very, kind of a young team this year. I, I think uh, the they played several different quarterbacks, but one of their quarterbacks, a uh, very talented freshman, but. Being a freshman, that's kind of a hard thing to be in, but uh, uh, we we had some some big plays. Our our defense really really played tough, uh, and if, if we can continue that, that's that's going to make us tough. To and you, you have a lot of admiration and respect for Grantsville as well. Absolutely, their, their coaches do a great job. I know it was kind of a frustrating night for them last night, but our kids are the, Again, they're, they're going to get better. I mean, th- that's a program that is two years removed from being the 3A state champions in Utah, which is a really tough classification. And so for us to be able to go up there and get a win against uh, their program, even though they're, they're kind of inexperienced and got a new guys that they're trying to, to, to get in there, it, it, was a, it was a great win for us. And just to kind of let everybody know, you are 1A, correct? We are. Smallest division in uh, in Utah. Yes, uh, we we've been two A historically, but there's been some some changes with with population in some of these communities. Uh, our our school population has dropped a little bit. But some other schools have gotten bigger, and so uh, we're we're in the in the what? Well, it's called the one A classification, but they have football on a different scale. We're actually playing all the teams that are 2A in all the other sports now. And, and I guess our attitude is it really doesn't matter where we're at. We're, we're, we're going to compete, and we're going to try to beat the teams that are in front of us, and we're going to worry about what we have to take care of. And so we like playing bigger schools. We like playing these teams that are going to challenge us and hope, hopefully make us better. So, Coach, it ends up at – 31 to 3. We talked off air about something that's pretty special that uh, Wheatley actually laid, just let it rip down the field about 35 yard pass, and it ended up being a around a what a 50 yard completion, roughly. Yeah, we had we had several of those, and, and I, I know there was one play where we were where we were able to hit uh, Baylor Blackburn. Uh, one of our receivers over the middle for, for a big play. I think that was in the second quarter. Um, we had some other ones where uh, we ran a little drag screen to Tate Gale and, and for a big play uh, in the, uh, let's see, uh, you know, with, with, without remembering everything. But we had guys like, uh, I know for one touchdown in the second quarter, we had a great pass from Wheatley to Gage Radden uh, on a corner route where, the guy was right on him from Grantsville. Actually, he got a PI on him, and Gage was able to come up with the ball. And uh, we had some great completions to uh, Deegan Blackner from Bodie Wheatley. Uh, it was just a really good balance. I mean, when I look at our passing game stats, we were eight of fourteen for 170 yards. Uh, that's that's big for us. Uh, a lot of times we don't have those kind of numbers, but just a great job by Bodie, our offensive line, our receivers. Uh, we, we got a lot of weapons on the team, and, and that makes it nice. To throw for almost 200 yards and then to rush for nearly 300 yards, that'll win it. That'll win a ball game about every night, Coach. Yeah, I, I think our total yards were 448, and uh, yeah, that's that's some good stuff right there. And what I've got here again, Bodie Wheatley, eight for 14 for 170 yards. Uh, as far as touchdowns, Coach, do you – let's see, I'll have to go back here. Was he able to throw for any touchdowns? Let me look here. Yeah, so let me look here. Um, if I remember right, yeah. So, uh, Bodie actually, if I'm remembering right, threw for three for two touchdowns. Okay. And, and uh, so one to, one to Baylor Blackburn, 
one to color Matheson. Actually, no, not Baylor Blackburn, sorry. Uh, one to color Matheson, one to Gage Radden. And then I believe we had rushing touchdowns by Deegan Blackner. Um, I can't remember exactly right now, but. No, uh, no, can, no can problem, no problem. In the end yeah. Zone, uh, yeah. On one of those. And when you look at our stats, really, you know, it's interesting because uh, I'm just looking at our stats here, our, our rushing line. And this is kind of what symbolizes Beaver football to me. Uh, we had Tavin Holling said eight rushes for 90 yards. We had Tate Gale, eight rushes for 71 yards. Deegan Blackner, five for 30. Uh, Color Matheson, three for 23. Um, so we, we're lucky that we don't have to have one guy carrying the whole world. We got three, four, five guys that kind of do that, and it spreads out those numbers, and I think it makes us a difficult team to defend. You can't just shut down one guy on our team. No, absolutely, definitely. And as far as receiving goes, I've got uh, Hollingshead with one catch for 41 yards. I've got uh, Blackburn with one for 29. Gale, two for 28. Blackner, one for 27. Uh, Radden, two for 23. And Matheson, one for 22. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, it's uh, pretty spread out there. Great you know, numbers. We, we don't have just one guy we can throw the ball to. we got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking with uh, Coach John Marshall, Beaver High School. The Beavers, uh, just what a, what a great game last night to end up going 2-0 and and continuing on the road uh, next week. We'll talk about that before we close out uh, this show. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the defensive side of the ball. I've got Matheson uh, with uh, eight assists and four tackles. That's terrific. I've got Robinson with two assists, three tackles, Radden with four assists, two tackles, Blackner with two tackles. I've got Hollingshead with seven assists. Coach, when you can have players with that level of teamwork working together to bring down a player, seven and eight assists, that's just winning football. Yeah, and again, I I love that. Um, it's it's a team effort for us. We don't have one or two guys that's that's just doing everything. Everybody's just doing their job. And and again, that we 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 like our depth. We like our balance. And and we really appreciate our kids buying in and being willing to to play that that type of ball. Where they're not going to be real worried about getting theirs. If that makes sense, they're. They're worried about the team winning football games and doing whatever we got to do to to make that happen. And rounding it out here, last but no, certainly not least, I've got Puffer, Gale, Langston, Evans, Beaumont, Blackburn, Murdoch. Uh, is that Gillies? Uh, yeah, but I think that yeah that might be uh, it's supposed to be Gillens. But okay, yeah, we'll... gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Uh, there's a few there that are, are pro- probably not quite right. But you got Kevin Holling said with with two there, Bowie yep. Wheatley with another tackle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 and uh, Lefferts. Yes, and they, I mean, that right there, that is again, that's winning football, having so many different players contributing and so many players assisting in tackles. Yeah, it's it's really spread out. So that's a that's a very interesting thing to look at. We got a lot of guys that are getting to the ball and and being a part of that coach by the way did we i'm not i'm looking here did was there any sacks yeah i'm uh, um, no there, there was. probably was i'm okay. trying to look here let me see um i don't, I don't see know if we have that on here so um i'm sure there was a couple that i can think of but it looks like we didn't have them on our stats show up right okay here. gotcha that's that's fine we'll, we'll pick that up another time comparing yeah. Comparing Grantsville and Beaver, let's go with 25 first downs for the Beavers, 13 for Grantsville, uh, 278 for Beaver, 
uh, Grantsville with 98. And again, I was talking to you just how impressive that is for the defense to hold the team. It might be 98 yards, but it's still not 100 yards. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're feeling pretty good when you can get into that that type of a situation. And, and that's our, our defense. We we didn't have any major breakdowns. We didn't give up uh, big plays. We kept everything in front of us. And uh, if we can do that, we're, we're, we're in pretty good shape. We're pretty tough. Average rush, seven to Grantsville's 3.2. We talked about passing. Uh just an extraordinary day by the offensive line and Wheatley. I always, as, as we're talking here, you've got to give a credit to the offensive line. Without the offensive line, you you really have nothing. That's that's correct. They are the unsung heroes. But in our system, if it don't matter how good, well, any system, it, it doesn't matter how good your backs are. If if the guys up front aren't aren't giving them space and aren't doing their job, they're not going anywhere. Uh, 12.1 passing yards. I mean, that is, that is, that is excellent right there. Yeah, it's, uh. At 170 just, yards. You know, and that's the thing, uh, the way they were playing us, uh, that's the, kind of what they gave us. And again, we're, we're very pleased with, with, uh, the effort that we had from everybody. On their side, Looks like Van Valet threw for 40 yards at 1.5. And again, as you said, they're young and they've got a great coaching staff just a few years off of a 3A state championship in Utah. So they'll they'll see better days. They'll improve as the weeks go on. They will. Grantsville's got a, a great program. they got great coaches. And again, it was our night last night. But again, you go back to last year, they, they kind of took it to us last year. So, like you said, it just kind of goes in, in, in cycles. And this year it was uh, our year to, to get the best. And you it. know the players that returned from last year and 15 seniors to return remembered last year's game. Yeah, you know, I, I think they did. Um, so there's uh, – Definitely, we we watched our film from last year. We saw, of course, what they they done to us, and and uh, I think our kids knew going up there that they they better be ready to come and play because even though they did graduate a lot of kids, they've got really good athletes, and it's it was going to be a battle. And so I'm really really proud of the way that our kids showed up and and responded. Rounding it out here, four forty eight. I mean, you're. You're putting up 448 yards of total offense, Coach. It's it's going to be a great day for for anybody. Absolutely. If if we can get you get over that 400 yard mark in high school, you're 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 having a good night. The level of the level of of winning is definitely way up there. 8.3 yards per average play. Grantsville at 2.4. Uh, uh, and I don't think I mentioned uh, yardage for Grantsville, 138. By the way, I am from Tennessee, so if I say vol, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> two turnovers uh, a piece. So, again, definitely always something to work on. Uh, there's always something, even in a big win, the, the, the competitors – the, the winning programs always find something to improve on, and, and that's definitely something I think you want to clean up there. Absolutely. We've, we've got so much work to do still, so much room to improve. Uh, for us, our co- for our coaching staff, that our main focus is we've got to make sure that we are addressing things and getting better week to week because if, if you don't, that's when, that's when you get beat. And so we've got to get better. Um, our game coming up this next week is going to be a really, really tough one. We're going to have to be better than we've been so far. And coach, talking about let's talk about third down conversions. The Beavers were eight of ten. That's that's awesome. Eight of ten for third down conversions. Three of sixteen for Grantsville. The sometimes the stats don't tell the story, but I believe this is this is a different situation here. Yeah, and and there were, and that's another thing I was proud of our offense is we had some situations there where 
you know, might have even been a third and long, and, and we had to we had to convert and and make plays happen, and and we were able to do that, which is just like you're saying. There are just certain times in a game where a play has to be made, and that's going to determine whether you win or lose, or successful or unsuccessful. And I thought we we did a good job of, of making those plays last night. Now, something that a lot of people will look at, and they'll, they'll look at a fourth down conversion rate, and if you're winning the fourth down conversion rate, you're generally losing the ball game. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. It's a nice way to look at it. Uh, the Beavers were 0-2 on fourth down conversions. Grantsville was three for five, but again, as someone that has studied the game for years and been a part of the game in many different facets, yeah, whenever a team has a high percentage of four down conversions, it generally means that they they probably have lost the game. Sometimes, if it is a close affair, if it's a one-score contest, it can be a little different. But usually, a high percentage on four down generally means that the team uh, has has probably come up on the short end of the stick. Yeah, that's that's true. That's an interesting interesting thought there. You know, so we got to look at some of those, like the two that we didn't get, and we've got to work on being better to to convert those and. And then on some of those that Grantsville got, we, we've got to, again, uh, work on being able to get teams off the field and not let them get those conversions. It uh, looks like we were 0 for 1 in field goals, and they were 1 of 2. But we've talked yes. about that right now your, uh, your kicker, let's see. Uh, uh, Santi Amesqua. Uh, Amesqua. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's dealing with a nagging injury. He was able to kick some extra points, though. He was, and actually, it's kind of a weird thing. The the field goal that he kicked, uh, everybody swore it was good. The, and again, I don't know. The referees had a better uh, look at it than we did, but uh, they they ruled that it was not good. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, it was really close. It was a great kick. Uh, Sonny's he's doing a great job for us. We're just hoping to get him a little more healthy and. We're expecting again. Continue to expect great things from him. Throughout how the how were the what were the size of the sticks on the on the goalpost? They were a little shorter, so they're not as long as we right. see, like at a mm-hmm. college or, or a professional stadium. And, and again, some of these kickers, if they're really good kickers, they boom up there. I think it can be hard to judge those sometimes on whether they're going through or not. It can be. It definitely can be. But to wrap it up. The Beavers, did you notice I said we too? I'm already I'm already bought in here. Hey, there uh, you go. <laughs> the Beavers end up 31 to 3 over Grantsville. Uh, again, Grantsville the uh just a few years outside of a state championship in 3A and the Beavers respectively 1A football. The Beavers improved to 2-0 and on the young season, heading on the road. Let's talk a little bit about that game, Coach, and we'll get you out of here and let you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay. Let's talk about this next opponent. going to be about three-hour drive for Beaver Nation. Yeah, we're playing in the Leighton Christian Academy. A very, very good football team. Uh they actually won the 1A championship last year and then got moved up to 2A this year. So basically we kind of flip-flop places, but we're really excited to get them on our schedule. They're a, a very quality program with some great players, and uh, it's going to be a challenge. They're going to be big. They're going to be athletic. They've got a really good quarterback that transferred in there from, uh, from Farmington, a 6A school up there. And uh, we're excited to see uh, what we can do against them. What do they like to do offensively, Coach? Well, they're a spread team, and the thing that makes them tough is they're able to both throw the ball and run the ball. Their quarterback is very mobile. He's able to uh, get out of the pocket and make plays on his own if that's what's needed. He's got a lot of speed. They've got a lot of speed with their receivers and skill guys. Uh, their linemen, they got a big, big offensive line, and they're they got a lot of weapons. They're they're we're going to, have to be extremely disciplined uh, if we want to contain them. 
Coach, it, it definitely sounds like a, a tough task. Now, what is their record as they come into the season? They're they're on one. They've only played one game, but they they lost to San Juan, who is the defending two A state champions. It was a pretty wild game. San Juan beat them sixty six to forty three, if I remember right. Okay, okay. It was a it was a shootout. It was a and uh, again, San Juan's a great team. Uh, you know, San Juan kind of got whatever they wanted on offense against Leighton Christian, but Leighton Christian put up a whole bunch of points. And and again, it's, it's going to be a challenge to see if we can slow them down a little bit. Yeah, I think the Beavers will be up to the test, and we shall, we shall see. Defensive side of the ball, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what, they, what they like to do, Coach? Well, looking at them, it, when I – and here, the thing that's interesting is – when we watch these teams, like so, San Juan's a spread team. The way the Leighton Christian plays against San Juan will probably be completely different than they play against us. But uh, Leighton Christian, uh, from what we've seen, they, they like to play a four front, kind of a four three. Mm-hmm. They play a lot of man coverage. Um, we're expecting that. Um, again, we'll have to see what kind of adjustments they make uh, to try to stop our run game. And uh, but. Again, playing our type of offense, sometimes we go into games where we're not really sure what teams are going to do to us. So this is the first time I think we've ever played Leighton Christian. So uh, it'll be exciting. Well, and the great thing now, too, is you'll be able to look at film as you saw what Grantsville did last week against you running a cover two and a man. You'll get a good idea of how to how to approach uh, the man. You, you, you already have an understanding uh, with Wheatley at quarterback, how to to attack that man defense? Yeah, and hopefully we'll have a good week of practice. We can get a chance to see what Sam Juan or not Sam Juan Leighton Christian is going to do, and hopefully get our kids prepared, and hopefully be able to have some things in place that's going to help us to to move the ball and get it in the end zone. Now, after that, you're coming. It's going to be the first home game of the season. Well, we are our, our game two weeks ago against South Summit was at home. Which was okay, got good. you, got you. We actually are going to be on the road for one more game uh, up at Duchesne the week after, which that will be another tough game as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, the Beavers will be definitely battle tested, making their their run to uh, to another state championship. Well, coach, it was definitely a pleasure talking with you, recapping. Uh, this just last night's action there uh, in Utah, beautiful Beaver, Utah, located uh, what about three hours from three and a half hours from Las Vegas? Uh, yeah, pretty close. That's about three hours and twenty minutes. Yes. Well, Coach, I tell you, I'm I'm definitely blessed and uh, glad to be a part of of. Uh, this this journey this season and we'll see what happens after that but uh we i've kind of locked in with you and we're gonna we're gonna do our best to to give the country in some aspects the world on uh, youtube a real view into beaver high school football well we appreciate that again we appreciate you giving our kids some exposure letting us come on and talk about our players and talk about our team and so we really appreciate uh, all of that, and it's been great. Absolutely, Coach. You enjoy the rest of your weekend, well-deserved. And everybody out there listening on the Jason E. Jones Show, if you're in southern Utah, go out and check out some great football. Beaver High School, again, located close to three and a half hours, about three hours and 20 minutes from where I lived uh, a couple of times. I am a traveler in Las Vegas, Nevada, a place that always uh, will be uh, definitely connected to me. Well, everybody have a great day wherever you're listening, whenever you're listening to the uh, to the show. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week with John Marshall. This week, folks, we've got some great interviews, high school football across the country. Right now, it's going to be loaded a little bit with Tennessee, where I'm from. We've got a lot of, uh, a lot of coaches coming on. Uh, McMig Central in between Chattanooga and Knoxville, Tennessee. Matt Moody coming on. We've got a lot of different coaches coming on. And I'm very, very blessed and proud to say we're going to have the voice of Florida State football 
coming on as as well as the Tulsa hurricane. So I don't know how I've been this blessed, but I'm very, very, very proud to be a part of this and this entire uh, situation. We'll see you next week, Coach Marshall. All right. Thanks for having me on. It was great. Yes, sir. Hang on the line. We'll talk to everybody again next time. Check out all the episodes on YouTube, guys, on the Jason E. Jones Show. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. And go USA. We'll see you next time, everybody, on the Jason E. Jones Show. Through the night